Hey Floss Tube, it is Michelle from Made by Michelle McGraw, and it is June 5th, 2025. Um, we have dogs walking around, as you can see. Um, hopefully, they will settle down and go lay down somewhere. They're a little, I've been running around doing errands this morning, so I just got back. So they're like, oh, you're back, you're back. And yeah, there they are. So maybe they'll lay down. So I have a lot of haul to show you, which was not intentional, but it all came in at one time. Um, I have two fully finished, three finishes, one sewing finish, um, two finishes, and some whips to show. So I have a lot. I wanted to get a floss tube in. We are headed to Texas tomorrow. We still have our traveling to do. We're trying to get some of it done and we will be going out tomorrow to do some of it. So I wanted to get a quick floss tube in. I've been doing errands this morning and I just got back and I said, let's do a floss tube. So anyhow, all right, let's show you the first um, fully finish. Uh, let me get my card. Of course, I put my cards where I cannot find them. Hold on. I think this is a scrap, so it's not going to make a difference anyhow. But let me just make sure I don't have the name for it. No, I do not. Okay, so this is a pattern from Barbara Anna. I don't remember what it was called. It was in the Primitive Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher magazine. But I think she's released it as a pattern now. And I had showed this finish. I did do this on a scrap piece of fabric. Um, I don't remember. I want to say it's 14 count. Picture this plus. It may be Tempest. I know it's 14 count. I know it's Picture This Plus. I'm not 100% sure of the color. But I thought it matched everything well. I did have to change out the vine color. And I just deepened it a little bit more so that it stood out against my fabric more. Same tonal, I kept the same tonal, I just deepened it. I think that was all the changes I made. So I finished it into a little ornament pillow. This is one of the gold to, hashtag gold to 52, gold to stitch 52 ornaments. And I'm doing that with the Traveling Viking Mom, Cow Stitcher, Lovin' Stitchins, and Red Poppy, I always forget, is it Red Poppy Crafts? I think it's Red Poppy Crafts, and there's an underscore in there. But if you look up the hashtag, you'll see people that's doing it. Um, so I finished this off with some fabric that I had in stash. I did put my labels. I get a lot of questions on my labels. I get my labels from Etsy. It is a store called Ever Emblem. I've had the best luck with them. Their labels stick. Um, they send you proofs and you approve the design, the font, everything. Um, and they have pre determined labels. And so you just kind of plug in your name, but they still show you, they still, um, give you a couple options to choose from super easy. And then they make them and send them. And I've never had any issues. And I got these new ones for 2023. So, um, the ribbon is from stash. So that was just something I had and I kind of roused it around for a finish. So I like how that one turned out. That was a fun one, just quirky one. I had had it in stash for a really long time and I never get around to stitching ones like that because when Christmas st stitching comes around, I want to do my, Chris my kids ornaments. I want to do my prairie schooler ornaments. I want to do all of these set things and these kind of quirky, fun, just any kind of ornament gets pushed to the back. And so every year I'm like, oh, I want to stitch that, but I run out of time. So with this goal, it has been really fun to be able to stitch some of those things that I just haven't had time. This is another one that I really like. This is a Lizzie Kate and it is a Tidy Tidings. I want to say it might be Tidy Tidings 12, but that seems maybe 22. I don't know. It is a Lizzie Kate Tidy Tidings. And I stitched it with the called for colors in theory. I just subbed them out to what I had. 
So I didn't change the colors, but if I didn't have the color, I found like a color and cotton substitute. I really, really like this. This was stitched on a golden, 14 count golden needle. I think it's what it's called from uh, 123 Stitch. And I finished this with some, I don't even know what you would call that trim. Um, it's a, just a trim I had. Um, I do hand sew my trims on. Um, I just find that I have better control. Liquid glue requires witchcraft I can't do. I've said this before. A little glue is great. In my mind, a lot of glue is wonderful. And then I have a mess. So, <laughs> and it gets in my hair. It, it, just don't give me liquid glue. Although on round ornaments, liquid glue is the easiest. And I, I had success doing that. So go figure. Anyhow, that's the front. And then here's the back for some fabric that I had in stash. I really liked the Mr. and Mrs. Claus, the kind of vintage look. And when I have a long ornament like this, I like to attach it at the very, very edges so that I can put it across the ornament or the Christmas tree branch and it hangs perfectly. So that's kind of what works for me um, to make them hang really well on the long ones. All right, so those are my two fully finishes. Um, let's get to my finishes now. I will show you my sewing finish first. So our local stitching group um, has some great, great members in them. And they are all, they just all have something special that they bring to the group. Uh, Beth offered to host a um, sewing class at the library on last Thursday. And so she said, we're gonna make this bag and this is what you'll need if you'd like to come and do it, bring your sewing machine, bring all your stuff, and we're gonna meet in a room in the library. So we did, and we made a bag. Now, I did not fully finish my bag at the library. I had to put the binding on and I had to put the straps on. We ran out of time. I came home, finished that within probably an hour, hour and a half, maybe, I don't remember, and I have my bag. So let me show you the bag and then I'll kind of talk about it. So, I don't have anything in the bag. Let me show it up. Okay, here is the bag. It is a patchwork bag straps. Now I did the straps. I like a long strapped bag. I don't like a bag under my armpit. I live in the South. Nobody wants a sweaty armpit up against your bag. I like it like around where my arm would fold. So I don't think you could see that, but like I'm kind of holding it right. That's what I like. So it was great because you can make your straps any length you want. So I picked out my fabric and my fabric is a Tula pink line except I added in this polka dot and I added in this green gingham. And there is a skunk, some zebras. This one has all the animal patches on it. And there is a lemur as well. Hold on, let me show the lemur in the back. There's the lemur. So it's a really cute fabric line. I thought I needed to break it up a little bit, which is why I went with to add this um, just to, so it wasn't so crazy. And then the bottom fabric is upholstery fabric. So it is a heavier duty, duty or is that a word? Duty, duty -er? It's a heavy duty bottom. I'm just gonna leave that there. All right, so we boxed in the bottom, as you can see. I've never done that before. I've never made a bag before. Beth is an excellent teacher. Um, we used double-sided fleece, and I had to borrow some double-sided fleece from my friend Rachel. Her bag was phenomenal. Um, she did a, she finished it at home and then sent us all a picture. She did a striped binding. It was an Americana print, and then her straps were striped too. It was so pretty. Rachel is so talented. So that is an inside joke because I borrowed the fleece from her and I said I would venture her in my floss tube. So Rachel is the bestest. So that was our bag. This is my inside fabric is um, gingham. I think this is Chelsea's checks, I think. It's whatever I had a yard of. So 
that was our sewing project. And I have to say, I had the best time making the bag. I'd never made one before. I didn't know how to do a box corner. Um, Beth helped, Tammy helped. And if I had any questions, they were there to help. Is it perfect? No, no, it is not. I need more work on matching up my patchwork seams. Um, I, but I was able to get some great, great tips and tricks from these ladies. Um, they were able to show me like when a seam locks in, how, how it feels. I had never felt that before. So I was like, I've heard about it, but I didn't know what it felt like. I know that sounds weird. So if you don't sew, you're kind of like, okay, whatever. But to actually feel it was great. And they were so patient. Um, I am going to attempt some, to make another bag on my own using the same things that we learned in class just so I can practice. And who doesn't need a tote bag, right? You can always use a tote bag. So um, that was super fun. Okay, let me get on to my finishes. This is one I can show you without... I, the other one I might show you when I find the bag. I want to show the pattern and the bag is down there in my whip. So I might show that in a little bit. All right. The first one is my Frosted Pumpkin Under the Sea Sow. So you guys had seen this. I had stitched. I had kept up with it pretty good. Um, I had Under the Sea. I had this half up around here. And... No, I had up around here. I did not have the otters. I didn't have these fish. I didn't have basically straight down and then this border. I had the top border, but I didn't have the bottom border. Um, so I wanted to finish this one. They came out with a new sow, which is the castle. I'll have the name for it in a little bit. I'll show you, I've started it. I wanted to finish this one. This was my goal to finish this one. So I picked this out and it is stitched on 14 count picture this plus gothic now they had a kit that had their fabric um i had seen somebody post this fabric and i was like oh my gosh i love how the white shows up on it i had gothic so that's what i picked i thought it was brilliant so this is my fully finished it is all done and i'll zoom in in just a minute um so this was used called for threads and I think I substitute one, I did not have a DMC 779 and I used a coloring cotton for it just to get it done. Um, so we have otters, we have divers, a mermaid, puffer fish, there's turtles, there's dolphins. Oops, why is my light going weird? Um, jellyfish, a stingray, seahorses, it is absolutely adorable. I loved stitching on this. Um, Frosted Pumpkin is always super, super cute. They're super, super fun. Um, this was a great, a great finish. Now I am going to try to put this in a frame, I believe. I thought they said it fit, but in an eight by 10, but I don't think it does. I'm gonna have to take it to the store and see what it fits into. I don't believe it fits in into an eight by 10. I think it's definitely bigger than that. So I'm gonna see what I can find. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to find something. If I can't find something, maybe I'll do something different. I don't know. I haven't figured it out, but I wanna fully finish this so I can put it out with my beach stuff. I think that will be really cute in the summertime. And then you can kind of see the gothic fabric. Um, it's not showing up as great on camera. It has some beautiful variegation to it. It's really, really pretty fabric. Anyhow, that is my first finish, fully, full finish, not fully finished. Okay, I'm just going to go through my whips and then I will show you this other finish that I have when I get to the bag that has the pattern in it, because I want you to see the pattern. Let me get this out of the way. This is something I picked up at Hobby Lobby. Tammy and I went to go get our bottom fabric for the class. And what else did we get? We got something else. Maybe we went for a uh, heavier duty needle. We ended up not using it. Oh, the straps, the straps. We went to go get the bottom fabric and the straps at Hobby Lobby. 
while we were there, I found this piece. It was either 40 or 50 off. I think it was 50 off. Here's the tag. And I think this is adorable to put a little finish piece right there. And it does stand up on its own, so it stand up on my shelf. So I just really like that. It was a great size. Hobby Lobby had some great, great finishing pieces. Um, I didn't want to buy too much because I have a lot and I need to use what I have. All right, let me show you my first whip. This is actually um, an ornament that I'm doing. I'm doing this whole set. Let me bring these out so you can see. I thought I had them all in here. They must be hiding between my working copies. I already had made working copies of everything so that I can mark off since they're so, um, I, I'll explain in a minute. I, I made working copies. I normally make working copies of all my charts. Okay, so I started this project. These are the project. It is Blackberry Lane Designs, Starry Night uh, Part 2. And if you can see those pendants down there, they're really pretty. Now those were stitched on super, super small fabric. They came with the pendants. I've had these for years. I do not have the pendants. I took them out. I knew it wasn't something I was gonna stitch on, but I really liked these. This is the one that I'm working on, but let me show you the other in the series, which I might've showed you already. This is Starry Night 3. So this one up here. This is Starry Night Pendant. It would be this one. So the silhouette here. They're hard to see on camera, but not in person. And then this one I have in there. I've had this one. Those, the four that I'm doing that are the silhouettes will be for the kids. These are a full coverage. I am doing this on Fiber on a Whim Afgato. And I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but I will show you the tag. Probably not, that's a good, accurate, it's a nice tan, variegated tan fabric. I started this on 18 count Bestitch Me Cosmo and you didn't see the shading and I just didn't like it and I restarted it. And this is my restart. I'm almost back to where I was for the first ornament. Whoops, sorry. You can kind of see the outline of what will be the silhouette starting. And I think they're beautiful. It's very hard to see the shading, but you can kind of see it right here. They're beautiful. So these will be the kids' religious ornaments this year. And I want to go ahead and get a start on those. The other ones that I have thrown in those in that bag that are that are not the silhouette ones, I want to do for my tree. Um so that's why I have them in there. And they're all kitted up. Okay, I think this is the one with the pattern in it. Nope. This is the, let me not show the pattern. That's the color key. This is the Frosted Pumpkin, the next sow that they do right now. It just came out. We've only gotten part one, so if you are interested, there is plenty of time and you'd be right in line with everybody. So this is Castle Homecoming Club from Frosted Pumpkin. And this is the only part that we've gotten. Everything else is faded out. So I started this and finished part one. Where's my little board? Oh, put my bag on it. Now, I hemmed and hawed about fabric, and I finally chose my fabric. I had this piece of Ada, and it is, um, hold on, I wanna get the name, because I wrote it down wrong, and then I went and fixed it. It is 14 count rainbow Scott, rainbow, over the rainbow from Cross Wing Collection, and I bought that on Stony Creek. I thought, if rainbow fabric wasn't perfect for a castle. So this is my start and I did not iron it, sorry. That is part one. I am completely done with it. I did use called four colors. 
It's really cute. I'm liking it. Now with this rainbow fabric, it was supposed to be, it was a piece that you would do horizontally like this, where you'd have the sky, kind of the rainbow in this grass. And I used a piece like this for another print. Um, and it turned out good, but what I found out was if you don't use the full piece, you don't really get that sky and grass thing. So I decided using it horizontally, I would get the rainbow effect and it's not gonna matter. That's what I wanted. I wanted the rainbow effect behind the castle. So that's what I have. Now, this piece is a little bigger than what's called for. I did not cut it down because um, I just left it. I left it big. It's bigger than I need, but that's okay. Um, I'll see what I have left over. Maybe I have a scrap left over. Maybe I don't. I don't know. We'll see. My goodness. There's something falling out there. I think Amazon delivered something and they like threw it at my door. <laughs> so weird. Um, okay, so that is Castle Homecoming. We will wait for part two. Okay, let's see. What is this? Is this the one that I wanted? Nope, this is not it. I'll get to it, I promise. <laughs> I have another finish. All right, this I did work on some, and I don't think I've showed it to you in a while. I didn't get much work, but I got some. This is Mill Hill Timberland Santa. This is the Scott, um, Scotch Pine Santa. And there he is. Now, I am stitching mine on. Picture this plus Cyprium. I have two fabrics in here to do Mill Hill Santas. One is the Cyprium and one is gingerbread. To me, they are very similar. Little tonal difference, but they're very, very similar. So I'm gonna use these fabrics up you, doing the Mill Hill Santas. I'm not doing them on the perforated paper, but here is my progress so far. Now, there is, he looks a little weird. He has no eyes yet. But when you do them on, um, I'm not doing the beading either. I'm leaving the beading off. I should say that. I'm doing just the pattern and the pattern gives you the floss color that you use underneath the beading. And that's what I'm using. I'm just stitching some pieces of floss on here. We'll have two symbols, if that makes sense. So um, the beading just didn't do it for me on this one. I didn't think it needed it. I thought about putting it on the tree. I don't know, I just didn't think it needed it. And it was highlighting. Now, I will have to work on his mustache because his mustache is braided. I've never done that kind of one, but it can't be that hard. Mill Hill has great instructions. So I worked a little bit more on him. Um, he is hard to do, like when the truck is moving, he's not a great project to do in the truck. So, um, okay, I have hair in my mouth, there it goes. I don't take him with me as often. So he doesn't get as much work, if that makes sense. Is this the one? This is the one I'm looking for. Okay. Oh, here's another hoop. All right, I'll just keep that in there. All right. Um, let me get my card so I can, this is Spirit of Santa Ornament, and I'm doing the Santa and the Reindeer, or I did the Santa and the Reindeer. I think I had showed my progress before. This is a Dimensions kit. It's a gold kit, and it comes with all the thread, and um, it had white Ada. I substituted it out for for 14 count picture this plus Ariel. I did this one to start with. I don't know if this kit is available anymore. I have seen it on Etsy. So I know you can buy the kit. I just don't know if they're resellers of the kit, like they're selling old kits or um, it is still in rotation. That I don't know. I've had this a long time. Here is my finish. 
I did not iron this one, sorry. It is straight out of the frame, but there it is. I love these. Now I have had this kit for so long and I always think these are the best classic Santas. They're beautiful. And I finally thought, why am I not stitching these? I need to stitch these. Um, I would love to stitch these at some point for the kids. So I'll probably hold on to my pattern and restitch them. I am using the floss, floss um, the kit floss. I am not a fan. I'm going to go ahead and tell you. I also have, I bring up on my phone the DMC conversion and that helps me find the floss. Um, but honestly, I probably would just use DMC conversion on this one and be done. It, it's the fact that it comes with so much is why I was doing it. But it's not, it wasn't separated. I had to separate it. And let me show you how much there is. So here's some floss. Here's some floss. This little floss holder is from Chantel 141 Designs. I love these. These are super handy. Um, I need to place an order for like 10 more of them because I have more kits that I want to do. And these are the best way to, when I get a kit, I instantly separate the floss and put them on these. There is her logo. So I love, love, love these. I ran out and had to use this little one. But that's all the floss. So I thought, well, I might as well try to use it. Very frustrated with it, just in case you were wondering. <laughs> not a fan of it, not a fan of it, but we're using it. I'll use it until it's done and then I'll go and do the DMC. I'll show it one more time. And obviously if I restitch these, I'm gonna have to do DMC. I think it's Cyber Stitches has a DMC conversion for, um, dimensions kits that you can look on. I think it's beautiful. I love this. Love it. Okay. So those were my two finishes. I just didn't know where my bag was because I have all of that in the bag so I can start another one. That is an at-home project. That is old school shading stitching and I like to mark off with my colored uh, twistable pencils. I like to mark off on the chart with those. So they're not great truck stitching for me. They're not great on the go. All right, I'm eating my hair. Okay, the next one that I've been working on, um, I showed before, but I got my finish where I was, it's not a finish. I got done at the spot I wanted to get done. I've put it away for just a little bit. This is Judith Kirby house nine and, and number 15. I'm stitching it on 28 count Twilight Mist Jobelin. Did I not get both houses out? Oh, let me show you. There are two different charts. I think the other chart is in my bag. And, but let me show you this on the back of the chart shows the two put together. That's the way I'm stitching it. This is an older chart. It used to be available through a store that sold Judith Kirby had the rights to sell. I have since heard that somebody wrote me on here and said the store closed. I want to say it was in Michigan, but I could be wrong. So the store closed. I don't know if they sold the rights to another store. I don't have that details. You can get these on Stash Unload. Um, I don't know. Okay, this is not ironed, but I have the first pattern completely done. So the way that you do is you leave off the, the border on this side and then you just start the other one. So the other one, and as you can see, I have plenty of material over here for the next house. Really, really pretty. I love this. You also leave off one of the moons or she says, if you wanna have fun, put two moons on there. Judith Kirby's patterns are super, I love the way she wrote her patterns. Um, I don't know anything about Judith Kirby other than I've seen her work. Um, but I love how she writes them of, you could do this, you could do that, you can substitute this. And I love that for cross stitch because there shouldn't be any rules. So she, I love that she's like, leave two moons. If you want to do two moons, that's fun. That'll be the other half that I have to do. So you just leave off this right there, super easy, and you butt it up against, and you keep going. The fence matched up, and you keep going. 
and I have this in my, um, oh my goodness, in my, uh, I'm trying to think what the bag, it, it's a flat bottom bag from Deborah Harry. And this was the first time I tried her bag, this style bag. I have the big bottom bags from her. This was the first time I tried the flat one. I like it too. If you've never tried her, it's Deborah Harry on Etsy. And I love her bags. And I don't like to tell people because her bags are fabulous and they sell out and then I don't get to buy any. I'm just kidding. She's so great. I love her bags. So I do have a lot of her bags, but I love her bags. They're so well made. Okay, what did I stitch on next? Am I missing one? No. Okay. Two more whips. All right. So as y'all know, my son is getting married October 15th. So I had been asking them what project they wanted to, me to do. Mainly I'm asking his fiance because my son could care less. And we finally found one that she liked. And it is a watercolor bride and groom. I think it's just called bride and, excuse me, bride and groom from Laser Art Designs on Etsy. This is the pattern. Now this is something like I've never stitched before because it's not, like if you zoom in, like her face doesn't have detail. His face doesn't have detail. It's watercolor, it's splotchy. It is super fun to stitch. I've never stitched anything like this. Lots and lots of fun. I, it, I've just had a great time stitching it. This is stitched on 14 count under the sea. Circe, I think is the way you say it. And this, wait a minute, I have the tag right here. Okay, I don't have my reading glasses on. I'm gonna hold it up so you can see because I'm probably not saying that right. And she, um, Mackenzie picked out the fabric. So this is my start so far. So page one didn't have anything. Page two was a sliver of the bride. Page three is the rest of the top of the bride and the start the groom. Page four has a slither. Sorry, my dishwasher's done. Um, it has a sliver of the groom over here and then you move down to the middle and then you move down to the bottom of the dress. That's why you need so much fabric. I am going to add their names and the dates to the bottom. So, whoops, I am so sorry. That did not work well, did it? Okay, I got it, you're done. So as you can see, when you look at it up close, you're like, hmm, the idea is to look at it from here. And obviously that's what you're gonna see on the wall. Um, Cause when I was stitching on it, I was like, oh, I don't know. And then I got up and it was, it was on my stand. I got up and I came back and I saw it. And I was like, oh, I see the bride. No, this is awesome. So it's kind of, it's, it's just totally different than what I've stitched before, but it's a lot of fun. So I, I started on that. I've put it away for just a little bit and then I'm going to go back to it. And I don't have to have it done for their wedding date, obviously. Um, I'm going to get it as close as I can and work to that goal, but it may not be done by their wedding. We'll see. Um, I don't want to get burned out on it, so I'm not, I'm not going to push that. Okay. The next one, I think you guys have seen this. I started this last year. I picked it back up. I am doing Prairie Schooler St. Nicholas 2, and I am doing the guy with the pipe. That's the whole pattern. So I'm stitching him on 14 count, picture this plus murky. That's all I've gotten so far. I don't have that much more I just need to stitch him. So he is a good one to take in the truck with me. He will be going. Um, my Prairie Schooler bag is always got Prairie Schooler Santas in it. This bag from um, Carol Creations. Is that what her name is? She has a tag somewhere and I always lose it on this bag. I think it's Carol Creations. Creative Carol Design. Sorry. Right there. 
This is the large size that I, I special ordered from her. She used to have it in the store. She does not anymore. It's double sided. I love it. I have all the threads for all the Prairie Schoolers in there. And then I have all of my Prairie Schoolers. I have a yard of fabric. And I have working copies of all my Prairie Schoolers. And that stays in the bag. So I can just pick out another one when I'm done. All right, let's get to haul because I have an incredible amount of haul. And this was not intentional. I do want to mention um, Garon Stitchery. I ordered some more of my... I ordered the roller frame and I used it on my under the sea. I used it for the castle frosted pumpkin one. I think that's the only two I used it on. I love it. I ordered some more bars. Let me tell you, Garon Stitchery, they did not pay me to do this. They are fantastic. They literally shipped. I, I want to say I got a shipping notice the same day. I was like, what? Like, how are they doing this? Crazy. If you need or want roller frames, I highly recommend them. Um, they are very simple scroll rod, easy to use. I put mine on the scroll rod. I didn't look at any videos. I just did it. I was like, let me just see how easy it is to do without, you know, I'm just gonna open it up and do it. Five minutes, I had it on the roller frame. That's how easy it was. I do highly recommend them. They get very tight. They're easy to use. Um, I did take them off. I took my castle one off the roller frame because I had it on a really wide one to work on um, because I didn't cut down my fabric. Um, when I pull it out next month, I'll put it back on the roller frame. I could have left it, but I didn't want to store it on the shelf in it. So I wanted to put it back in its bag. Um, but it's super easy. I ordered more bars for them and it came lickety split. So Garon Stitchery is highly recommended, highly. Another store I'm gonna recommend is Barefoot Needle Art. They did the retreat that I went to. They are in Surf City, South Carolina, and near Myrtle Beach. And I ordered some fabric from them. Now, they did great on the retreat. I enjoyed it, loved it. Sometimes ordering is different. I placed an order. No, they are fantastic. I got a refund for a fabric that was not in stock immediately. I got an email that said, hey, we didn't have this pattern. We sent you a refund. And I was like, wow. Like I, you know, our, oh, I got a shipping notice. It shipped out literally the same day. Blown away. So I highly recommend Barefoot Needle Art. Um, I'm also getting the new beach series from... Is it Country Cottage Needleworks? I'm ordering it through them. So I sent them an email. I saw their, um, they posted it on Instagram and I said, hey, I want to order this. What do you need? My email um, is the same as my PayPal. Do you guys do PayPal for these clubs? And they said, absolutely. We verified my address and we're good to go. Love it. I'm so excited. All right, so I got some fabrics that I wanted and I wanted to try some stuff. Now these are, some of these are, um, they're dying. So they are dying stuff and I wanted to try their, um, their Ada. I'm picky on Ada. I like a soft Ada. Now some people don't like soft Ada because it is a little harder to work on with your tension. But if I'm going to do a pillow finish, I love a soft Ada because it's so easy to turn. Will I stitch on stiff Ada? Yeah, I will. Um, I'm normally saying some choice words when I have to finish it into a pillow and I'm like, Ugh, because it's just harder to turn. Soft turns fabulous. So I'm always trying new dyers Ada. And I will say, this is pretty nice. I would say this is not as soft as Picture This Plus, but definitely not as hard as Stiff Ada. So I would say this is a good medium if you uh, want to stitch on Ada and you like the look of dyed Ada, but you don't like Picture This Plus. Maybe Picture This Plus is too soft for you. Maybe you don't like that. I've heard stitchers say that. That's fine. I would say their Ada is good. This is showing up great. Stormy Seas. Very, very pretty. I'm hoping to use this as a black. Um, this one is 
spring spring mard um, that would probably be accurate very pretty This is Beach Days. This is an 18 count. It's bluey with some brown in it. Very pretty. This is a Lugana. I wanted to try their Lugana. This is Beach Days. Well, here we go. Let's see the difference in Lugana and Ada. Now, this is not the Dyer's they don't, they're not doing anything wrong. Lugana dyes lighter than Ada does. So you can see the difference right here. You can see where this is the Ada. It's picking up more of the blue and the Lugana is subtler. So if you ever have a question and you, you like either of those, Ada will dye darker, Lugana will dye lighter. It's the like what the fabric is made out of and what pulls the dye in. But that's kind of fun to see when you get two pieces. This is Fox and Rabbit Dirt Track. This is not dyed by them. Mm, there we go. That's a good one. Very pretty. Um, this is Mystic Fabrics Illusion fabric of the month, but they were selling it. Apparently somebody didn't get their order maybe. And I was able to grab that. Thought that was pretty. This is Rogue Vapors fabric of the month. So once again, maybe somebody didn't take their fabric of the month or they had extra. Oh, this is not showing up good at camera. This is, let me put it up against white so you can see. It definitely has some grayish purple tint to it. Very pretty. That one's hard to see on camera. All right. I also got some fabric from 123 Stitch. Um, this is Picture This Plus Gothic. And I got it in three different sizes. So there you can kind of see how Gothic is. And I also got it in a Lugana. Now, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, this actually does not feel like Lugana. I think this is their linen. This feels like linen to me. It has a tag on it that says 28 Lugana, but I don't think it is. I think that's their linen. So here you can kind of see linen and Ada dye similar, in my opinion. I think linen dyes slightly darker. It says Lugana, but that's not like any Lugana I've had from Picture This Plus. So I think that's marked wrong. It's fine, I'll use it. Okay, this is 14 count Picture This Plus Glacier. That was from 123 Stitch. Uh, am I done with fabric? No, I'm not. No, oh no, I'm not, I have way more. Yes, all of this came in at one time. This is 14 count flannel flower from Fox and Rabbit. And I've never tried their Ada. Mm, it's blowing out. Uh, that might be, you can see the variegation up here. I've not tried Fox and Rabbit's Ada. I wanted to try it. It feels good. It's not super, super soft. It's a good medium. Um, but I haven't stitched on it yet. So I will let you know when I stitch on it, what I think. I wouldn't think that I would have a problem with it. I think it'll be fine. Okay. This is a uh, typeface patriotic series from It's So Emma. I got this from Fat Quarter Shop. I loved this pattern. I immediately went and ordered it. People online are stitching with a full face for Uncle Sam. I don't know if they're gonna do all of them full face, but I love them and I might copy that idea. I love it as it is, but 
the Uncle Sam's full face is adorable. So I might have to copy that idea. I don't know. I love that pattern. My club for Big City Christmas, Country Cottle Need Needleworks came in. This is Music Hall. And I am putting these with my Hometown Holidays. And I my plan is to stitch them with the Hometown Holiday series in the same color. So I won't be using the colors that the pattern calls for. I'm just going to grab um, colors out of my Hometown Holiday series since I've already started those. And work them in. All right. I joined, um, I had to, I, I canceled my uh, X, no, Color and Cotton. They are no longer doing Lugana. I decided that I didn't need any more Ada. And, and then I ordered Ada. But I wanted some more Lugana. That's why I was doing a fabric of the month was to get some Lugana because I don't have tons of Lugana. So I joined X Jude Designs um, Fabric of the Month Club. And this is the May piece and I got Lugana in it. Very, very pretty. You join through Etsy, you prepay for whatever amount you want. I did a year and you get a piece of it every month. And I've done that with their Ada Club before. And so I decided when Color and Cotton was discontinued their Lugana Club, I would do another club that had Lugana. x Designs is what I decided on. Okay, I have Under the Sea fabric and I wanted to try some colors that were Ada. Now I have not taken any of these out of package, so I don't know if I can see the names. I'm just gonna show you them. This is from Under the Sea. If I can tell you the name, I will. I don't wanna open packages on the camera. Some people, that really bothers. This is Nessie from Under the Sea Fabrics. This is all Ada. Um, Nefer, Neferides, I think, 14 count. Mm, that one's hard to see. It's a dark blue. Um, that one I can't see the name, but super pretty. And that's just because the tag is turned around. This is Hamlet. Very pretty. If you haven't used her Under the Seas um, Ada, it is nice and soft. That's what I'm using for the bride and groom as well. Um, this is NYX. As you can see, I had a color palette in mind when I was shopping. Uh, River Sticks, I think is that's called. That's a really pretty gray. And this is Witching Hour. Mm, there. So that order was ordered a long time ago. Well, not a long time ago. It takes, I think she says on her website that it takes like six to eight weeks for dying because she dies for your order. So, you know, that came in along with my others. So now I have a lot. Yeah, that always happens. Okay. I got the Plum Street samplers. This I know. I had this on order, uh, pre-order. I actually just got it. Long story, it got lost. I was able to get my, um, they sent me out another copy. Uh, this is Picnic Ant Coasters. I actually got this out of um, a magazine group, but oh my gosh, are these not adorable? They, they're so cute. And I have the my little cross-stitch boards. I thought that would be super cute for the cross-stitch boards. Now, I also don't know if I want to cross-stitch all that. It would be kind of boring, but they would look so cute up there. Okay, this one I wanted to tell you about. I saw this pattern online, and they said that you could only get it from Craft Gallery in Finley, Ohio. Now, I used to live, I was born in Tiffin, Ohio, which is very near Finley. And I, so I wanted to call them and, and place this order and they were very, well, I emailed them and they said, we don't do PayPal, but you can call us with your credit card and we'll be happy. They shipped it out incredibly fast. I think it was to me in two, three days, crazy fast. 
So I would recommend Craft Gallery in Finley, Ohio. I would love to go to their store. Um, I have not been to their store yet, but I would. I think it's the same store that my mom used to go to when we were kids. Um, but it has changed location, they told me. So I, I don't remember the outside of the store from their website, but if they changed locations, that would make sense. Okay, this is Teresa Koget in his image, and this is only available through Craft Gallery. Is that not gorgeous? I love it, love it, love it. So when I get done Beauty Fades, this is gonna be the next one I do. Okay, I also ordered, um, I don't remember who, I think I got these off of Amazon. One, two, three stitch was out, but these are Trilogy and these are the Hocus Pocus Witches. There we go. So you can see all of them. I'll show you up close. I would stitch these on fabric. I would possibly stitch them on bigger fabric and make them into stand-ups. I think that would be super, super cute. Like maybe stitch them over two on 18 count, make them nice and big. I liked those, so I got those. And then I got more on my one, two, three stitch order. Not that I needed anything more because I think my stash part of this video is longer than my stitching. Yeah. This is Heart and Hand Floral Etching, and I love this chart. Now, I am not a flower stitcher. I will stitch a flower if it's in the pattern, but I'm not normally a flower st stitcher, but to me, these are quirky and fun flowers. And I think they're so pretty and I ordered it. I think it's so pretty. I also got this dimensions kit that is Christmas pups. My son always likes an animal, especially dogs. So I got that kit for him. I think he's already picked out his animal ornament for this year. Um, but I'll also show him that and see if he wants to change his mind before I stitch it. But he can pick out whatever he wants. Doesn't matter. I'll stitch it for him. Um, this is part of the Blackberry Lane. I did not have these, so I ordered this. This is Keeping Watch. Very pretty. And this one is the Three Wise Men. They're very similar to the other ones, but I did not have these, so I ordered those. Um, okay, I have Seaside Towny, Tiny Town, but it's not out here, so I don't know where I put it. I got the uh, extra pattern that goes with it, but I don't have my Seaside, so I don't know where I put it. I also got Mr. and Mrs. Western um, from Dirty Annie's. I think that's a cute little ornament. This one is, I don't know if I got this off one, two, three stitch. Um, it is Lizzie K, A Little Wedding. And it says two hearts, one love, and then you put their name and their date. And I just think that's really cute to make as a little small piece. So I got that one. And then I got 12 Weeks to Christmas from Thistles. Now this is hard to see, but there is some great designs on here. This was at one, two, three stitch. They're in little um, gloves, little mittens, but like there's a fireplace, snowman, the car with the tree. Um, there's a gingerbread, a building, a more snowman. They're really cute, a penguin. I don't know if you can see all of them. That's a better. So I bought that one because, you know, I need more ornaments, right? I also bought these Design Works Crafts. It's a felt ornament kit. Now, I've never done one of their felt ornaments, but I have made felt projects before. So I thought I'd give them a try. So here's some Santa and some Santa faces. And then I also got these. Santa faces. They're all slightly different and I wanted to give them a shot. So we'll see if I like doing them. I don't know. They'll be, they'll be cute ornaments to put on the tree too. Okay. So that is everything I have to show. 
I'm sorry the light um, keeps going wonky when I move. I'm sorry. My camera does some funky things. So what am I stitching on? I will continue to stitch on the wedding project. There's Sammy. She's probably annoying somebody or fixing to get into something. Who knows? Um, I'm going to stitch, keep stitching my ornaments. Um, I'm trying to start some of the kids' ornaments. Well, I've started the kids' uh, Christian ones or religious ones, I guess I should say. Um, I've started those. I have some other ornaments picked out for them, so I'm starting those. Um, just kind of picking up projects here and there. Um, but mainly I'm stitching to get to July will be all Christmas. So I will continue with the ornaments and then I will also add in my manger. I will add in hometown holidays again. There is another project that Ginger actually sent me that I really want to stitch. It's an adorable discontinued pattern. She was so nice to share her copy with me. Um, I want to stitch that one. Um, trying to think there might be one or two other like Christmas stitches that I'd like to stitch. So in July, I'll move <laughs> randomly. My cat likes to sit on the back of that chair for some reason. And I have no idea why. Um, that's her new favorite place to sleep. I have my bedroom door shut and she likes to nap on my bedroom door or my bed and I have it shut. So maybe she's scoping out a place to take a nap. I don't know. But anyhow, um, I'm going to be moving to stitch that, but I am going to keep up with the Frosted Pumpkin uh, stitch along um, and then the Bride and Groom. I'm, I'm going to just keep working on that. Um, I'm going to try to get back to the Judith Kirby, but I may not get back to the Judith Kirby this year because if I don't get back to her in the next couple of weeks, then I go on to Christmas stitching and I don't look back. So um, we'll see. If not, She'll come back out and I'll do the other house next year. So that's fine. Um, so that's it. That's that's my plans. Uh, we will be on the road for a little bit. Um, the first trip is, we'll probably be gone four or five days. So not, not too, too bad. Um, there's one that we can't go to till the end of June. And that one's going to be our long one. Because it's three days of driving out and then three days of driving back. Actually, it'll probably be more like four days of driving back because we'll be under permit, maybe even five. We'll see. We'll see. But that's, that's going to be a longer one. That one's going to be harder. So anyhow, we do have some trips coming up. Um, but I'm prepared. I have kits loaded up into bags, ready to go, or I should say patterns, and I'll have stuff to stitch in the truck and to show you when I get back. So thank you for joining me. If you haven't liked and subs subscribed, Please do so and I will see you in a bit and happy stitching.